Wow. <laughs> you tell you tell me once that uh, Fushante gave you a guitar. Oh, that's right. That's what's, right. Where's I, that? What's up with that? You know what? I should put that up. I what's, the put, what's the story with that one? Okay, great story. Um, I hope he doesn't mind me telling this. But uh, okay, so years ago, uh, I was when I was in the Red Hot Chili Peppers. I was then in the band for a couple of years, maybe five years, mm -hmm. four or five years. And uh, John had quit the band, and he ended up in uh, rehab. And I don't think it's a secret that he. It's uh, a very public, it's a very publicly mm -hmm. known battle thing that, that, and, and I myself have struggled from. Anyway, he ended up in the same rehab that I went to. So uh, he reached out to me and said, hey man, you know, I'm stuck in here. Can you bring me a guitar? Cause I, you know, I can't play here. I have nothing to play. I was like, no problem. So I, I got a, uh, I had a Sunburst uh, Les Paul guitar that I had because I was considering joining Guns N' Roses at the time. Oh, wow. Yeah, so I had this guitar because- Late 90s or something? Or something like whenever that, that was. Yeah. <clears throat> I got asked to join Guns N' Roses and I didn't, it wasn't the right time for me. I was strung out on drugs or whatever. But uh, I bought this this uh, this Les Paul and I, and I had it and I was like, yeah, man, you know, I, I'll loan you this Les Paul and I'll bring it down. So I brought the Les Paul down to where he was in the, in the facility. We hung out, we talked a little bit and um, I never saw it again. And I think he left the facility and uh, you know, who knows what happened, right? So life goes on. I uh, end up leaving the Chili Peppers. I don't know where John is. Nobody really does. I think Arik, no, who, who replaced? Yes, you're right. Did that John, was the first one. Did John come right back or did Arik Marshall go Arik in? Marshall go in. Wait, to tour. No, did, I think Arik was before me. No, I don't think so. I don't know. Okay, but so whatever. The long end of the story was like... 10 years later, John calls me and it's like, hey man, can I come up to your house? And I was like, sure. Yeah, of course, come on up. I give him the address. He comes up, knocks on the door and he's got a guitar case. And I'm like, oh, that's not that. It's not unusual that yeah. a guitar player would bring a guitar to a guitar player's house. Yeah. And he opens it up and it's a black Les Paul. And he goes, I just wanted to give this to you because years ago, you gave me a Les Paul and I sold it and bought drugs with it. And I just want to make it right. Aww. And I was like, wow, wow, man. And we sat and we talked for like a couple hours and you know, it was just a cool moment. So that, that black Les Paul is at my house and that's going to go up on the wall. That's pretty that's cool. Great. Yeah. I love that. I love that he, <clears throat> you know, he tried to make amends with that, but, uh, in a weird roundabout way, the black Les Paul that he replaced it, with is now more special to me Absolutely. than the original one yeah. was you know, all a, that's these years cool later. So. Did he sell it to Slash? The Did sunburst. <laughs> that would have been cool. I, unlikely. I don't think Slash has paid for a Les Paul in a many, many years. Probably since he bought his first one, yeah, I would imagine. I don't think Slash pays for those. But uh, that's yeah, a good story. sweet guy. And uh, I've been getting a lot of chili pepper questions lately on the Instagram. That's, I feel like that's pretty common for you, yeah? Well, not as the in, the influx of them. I for the first time ever have done that. Ask me a question thing on um, on Instagram. Yep.